This is why you need to get rid of all images of the cross that's in your house, your car, your keychain, whatever that may be. This is one of Yahuwah's Ten Commandments right here, Exodus 20 verse 4. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in the heavens above, on the earth below, or in the waters beneath. The cross is an idol. Not to mention, the Messiah did not die on a cross, he died on an upright stake or pole, with his hands above his head. If you go to the word that was used for cross in the Greek, it's storos, which means an upright stake, a pointed one, used as such in fences or palisades. Strong's definition, a stake or post, right, an upright stake. And if you do some research, before Christianity, crosses were actually a pagan symbol of fertility. And Celtic crosses too, they predate Christianity and were first used by pagans in the worship of the sun. This is why in all these false images of the Messiah, you see a sun behind it. Not to mention, this is not even the Messiah, this is Caesar Borgia. This is a former Pope's son whose image was used to deceive us into thinking that this is what the Messiah looks like, but it's actually just Caesar Borgia. The Messiah was not even a white man like they tell us. He was a Hebrew. You can go do some research into this, but the original Hebrews were actually of the black race. You can actually confirm this by going into Revelation 1, 14 and 15. This is a description of Yahusha. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. His eyes were as a flame of fire, his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice was as the sound of many waters. This right here is burnt brass from a furnace. So get rid of all this pagan stuff out of your house, man. When you bring this stuff into your house, you're bringing demons into your house. Literal demons are attached to these idolatrous images. It's time that you repent and you follow the narrow way. There's 2.4 billion quote-unquote Christians in the world. But we are told to enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. I would say that's a pretty wide gate right there. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Don't forget to like and follow. I'll see you guys in the next video. Shalom.